Hey guys, Dr. Yu here. Welcome back to another T's review lesson. Today we are going to talk about the muscular system. This is the second part of the neural muscular system. We have gone over the nervous system, so today we just need to finish the muscular system. All right, there are three types of muscle tissues. First one is skeletal muscle. Now the skeletal muscles are attached to bones and collectively the skeletal muscles and bones work together to generate movement, right? So for example, you can move your hands, you can uh, move your legs, you can walk, you can run, you can jump, right? So that's all due to the skeletal muscles and bones. The second type is cardiac muscle. This is easy to remember because most people are pretty familiar with cardiac, right? The word, you know, cardiac refers to something about the heart. Cardiac muscle is basically the heart muscle, right? When the cardiac muscles contract, this is when your heart contracts, right? And pumps blood into the blood vessels. The third type is smooth muscle. Now, smooth muscle is usually found in visceral organs and body tract. For example, urinary tract, gastrointestinal tract, respiratory tract, right? So this is where you can find a smooth muscle. And visceral organs, uh, smooth muscle is present in the, in the stomach, in small intestine, in large intestine. Smooth muscle can also be found in blood vessels, right? This is how your blood vessels can dilate or constrict, and that's all because of the, con the contraction and relaxation of smooth muscle. You need to be able to differentiate which muscle tissue is under voluntary control and which muscle tissue is under involuntary control. Okay. Now there is only one muscle tissue that's under voluntary control. Voluntary control means you can consciously control the muscles. Right, right now you are probably you are listening to the video, right? I'm gonna ask you to move your fingers. So move your fingers. And you can definitely do that, right? So how do you do that? That's because you can intentionally control the skeletal muscles on your fingers, right? Your brain sends a signal to those muscles, and those muscles contract, which moves the bones, which moves your fingers. So skeletal muscle is under voluntary control. Again, you can consciously control the muscles so that you can walk, you can run, you can jump, you can make all kinds of movements. The other two types of muscle tissues are under involuntary control. Involuntary control. Okay, that means you cannot consciously control cardiac muscle or the smooth muscle in your organs or tracts. Uh, for example, uh, let's say um, you're very nervous, you, your heart is beating very, very fast, right? So can you consciously tell your cardiac muscle to not contract uh, this fast to tell, can you consciously tell your heart to slow down the heartbeat? No, you can't. Next, this is actually related to the voluntary and involuntary control. The cardiac muscle and the smooth muscle are under involuntary control that's because they're regulated by the autonomic nervous system. The system is um, on autopilot, so they just you know, control themselves. Uh, they, this system does not require your conscious attention. So that's the nervous system division that regulates, that controls the cardiac muscle and the smooth muscle. The skeletal muscles, um, are act, or, or on the other hand, are controlled by the somatic nervous system. And the somatic nervous system has to be controlled consciously by your brain. Next, let's look at the anatomy and organization of a skeletal muscle. Um, I read the TEAS study manual. There's not too much information on this, so I'm just going to point out a, a few of the major structures, especially the ones that are mentioned in the, uh, in the study manual. Uh, if you look at the diagram, you can see at the top, um, this is supposed to be a piece of muscle, right? Now it doesn't show here, but you can imagine there is a bone right there, a bone. And then this white part, this is tendon. Remember tendons attach muscles to bones, right? Attach muscles to bones. Tendons are different than ligaments. 
because the ligaments attach bones to bones. So bones to bones. You need to know the difference because teeth may ask you about this uh, difference between tendons and ligaments. All right, now this whole unit is a muscle, right? So this is the largest scale. Now, muscle consists of smaller subunits. Those subunits are called fascicles, fascicles over here. So if you go down a scale, right, the uh, units that make up a muscle are fascicles. So you can see uh, right here. This is one fascicle and it's zoomed in, right? So now it looks a lot bigger. All right, now when you look closer at each fascicle, again, it consists of smaller subunits, right? So each fascicle is made up of muscle fibers. So you can see this is one muscle fiber, right? You can see these many muscle fibers will form one fascicle. Right. So that's the next level, which is muscle fiber. Now, a muscle fiber is the same as a muscle cell. Because if, you know, the skeletal muscle is a little bit special, so instead of saying a muscle cell, we call it a muscle fiber. Because the shape really kind of cylindrical, right? It looks like a fiber. Okay, now you can further divide the muscle cell and go down to even smaller scales, right? When you look at one muscle fiber, it actually is made up of a lot of myofibrils. So myofibrils is the next, uh, is the next subunit that make up muscle fiber. So that's myofibril. So let me just uh, write it here. So we have a muscle which is made up of fascicles, right? And each fascicle is made up of muscle fibers, which are basically just muscle cells. And when you look at each muscle cell or each muscle fiber closely, you will see in the cell, there are many myofibrils. The so myo means muscle, myofibrils. Now, myofibrils consist of two main protein filaments, actin and myosin. Actin is the thin filament, and the myosin is the thick filament. And it's pretty obvious. When you look at the diagram on the bottom over here, you will notice that there are two different lines, right? There's purple, thicker lines. So these lines represent myosin, the thick filament. And there are also thinner, smaller green lines right here. These green lines represent the thin filament, which is actin. Okay, now before I talk about uh, how actin and myosin work together to uh, lead to muscle contraction. I just want to introduce one more term. Now, this term is mentioned in T's study manual, although I don't think there will be any questions on this, but it doesn't hurt to know what it means. So for each myofibril, there are these segments that are the contractal units on its own. So those are the contractal units. And these contractal units are called sacromeres, sacromeres, all right? So when we look at muscle contraction, we can just look at each sacromere and see how uh, each unit contracts, which uh, will translate to the contraction of the entire muscle. Okay. Now let's move on to the next slide. This is a close up of myosin and actin filament. So you can see again, this kind of thicker, darker uh, filament. This is a myosin, right? myosin over here. And then the green ones are actin. And this is a one sacromere, one contractile unit. You probably notice that there are these kind of little structures on myosin. Those are myosin heads. Myosin heads, because they look like a, a head. 
Now, when the brain sends signals to the skeletal muscles and asks those skeletal muscles to contract, there will be a series of steps which eventually leads to the interaction between axin and the myosin. So what happens is these myosin heads right there, they will attach to the binding sites on actin. So you can see these uh, myosin heads kind of latch on to, uh, to actin, right? And then the uh, myosin will pull the actin toward the midline, right? This is the midline. So once the uh, the heads are attached to the to the actin, right, and then this will pull the actin filaments toward the midline. And when you compare these two sacromere states, you will see that the second one, this is when contraction takes takes place, contraction, and this is a relaxation. You will see that the sacromere is shorter, right? This is uh, how long the sacromere is when the muscle is relaxed. And this is how long the sacromere is when the muscle is contracting. So this is basically how muscle contracts, right? For each contractile unit, there is contraction and the length of the muscle fibers are getting shorter. Okay, so this is how uh, you generate muscle contraction, basically. It's really just myosin pulling on actin toward the middle and generates a contraction and generates a force, right? So that you can move the bones and generate movement. Okay, now let's look at some questions. Number one, which of the following is controlled by the autonomic nervous system? Remember the autonomic nervous system is um, basically operating on its own, right, automatically. So the automatic nervous system controls the type of muscle tissue. There you go, muscle tissue that has to be under involuntary control. And you can't, you cannot consciously control it. So which of these actions is done by either cardiac muscle or smooth muscle? Right? Only those two muscles are under involuntary control. Walking, you are using the muscles on your legs, right? And then some of the other body parts. So you are using skeletal muscle. So that's not the answer. Chewing, you're using muscles on your face. No. Heart beating, there you go. This is generated by cardiac muscle. Right? So this is the correct answer. Talking, you're using your tongue, you're using your facial muscles to talk, so that's also under voluntary control, right? You are using skeletal muscle. Number two, oh, the font's a little bit different. Number two, which, what is the primary component of muscles? So all those, you know, uh, actins and myosins, all those are protein fibers, right? So proteins. And that's why, you know, a lot of people who are building their muscles tend to drink protein shakes.